In this anime, the male protagonist wakes up to find a beauty holding his big banana. Shocked by the male protagonist who suddenly wakes up, the beauty accidentally hurts him. It turns out that this beauty sees the male protagonist in a coma, so she tries to restore his spirit in a special way. To help him heal his wounded body, the beauty says she is willing to serve him. Thus, she is the first member of the male protagonist's harem after he comes to another world. Not long after, he will attract a lowly who is cute and possesses strong divine power. A female knight who has a sexy body and is a bit perverted. And even more than 2,000 villagers in the village become his followers. Why would the male protagonist reincarnate into another world? Let's start with his encounter not long ago. Yakito, the male protagonist, has a father who is the leader of the cult dedicated to the mighty god Matama in order for his child to become the next leader. His father recently held a ceremony in which he put Yakito in a wooden barrel and threw it into the sea. And his father firmly believed that the god Matama would come to rescue Yakito. If Yakito survives, he is qualified to become the new cult leader. At the moment of being thrown into the sea, Yakito recalled his tragic life. Because of his father, he was forced to participate in various strange rituals since childhood. Sometimes he had to go through the flames, and sometimes he had to stand under the waterfall in winter. But having a perverted father is not the worst, and Yakito has really bad luck. He often stepped on dog shit and got the worst lot when drawing lots in the temple, which makes him despair about his life. Even when he was browsing adult-only websites, he would become glassy-eyed. He hated such a life, and the last thought in his mind when he sank to the bottom of the sea was, if there is really a god, please let me be reincarnated into a world without gods and religions. Some time later, he feels that someone is holding his big thing and is rubbing it. The beautiful woman in front of him is named Alara, and she is holding an adult-only book that explains how to restore the spirit of a man. Until Yakito is woken up by her, Alara stops her action shyly. She is sorry for injuring Yakito's big banana just now, but Yakito doesn't care, and he is very happy to find out that he has really traveled to another world. Looking at the surroundings, coupled with many reincarnation novels he read before, he thinks that he must now be in the novice village, where there should be an adventurer's guild that assigns tasks to adventurers, and he can slowly raise his level by finishing the missions. So he asks Alara if there is an adventurer's guild here. Alara thinks Yakito is looking for a job, so she takes Yakito to find a job. On their way, Yakito is still fantasizing that he must show his strength in another world to make up for the misfortune he suffered in his previous life. However, the next moment, Yakito appears on a farmland and is about to farm. There is no adventurer's guild in the village at all. Just then, a man named Roy appears, and seeing that Yakito and Alara getting so close, he is a bit unhappy and is about to teach Yakito a lesson. The next moment, a man named Klen appears to stop Roy. He not only greets Yakito, but also hands Yakito a dagger and asks him to help. Yakito thinks it is a weapon for novices and he needs to fight monsters, but Klen just asks him to help pick the grapes. Yakito thinks to himself that this must be the task assigned by the system for the player, so he intends to do his best to speed up the task, and in less than half a day, he picks the grapes that others need to pick for several days. Klen is a little troubled. In this world, there is no refrigerator or anything like that, and they can't finish so many grapes at all, so finally, he can only throw them away. Hearing this, Yakito seems to have something in mind. The next moment, a carnival is held in the village canteen, and everyone drinks wine. It turns out that Yakito temporarily stays in the restaurant run by Alara and her sister for a month, and during this month, Yakito helps them make wine from the extra grapes. It is their first time drinking such delicious wine, and they are very grateful to Yakito. Even Roy, who previously wanted to beat Yakito up, becomes good friends with him. After that, Yakito thinks of what he did this month, which was either working in the farmland or helping to feed the livestock, completely different from his imagined adventure in another world, and he feels very frustrated. The next day, while he is farming, a wild beast accidentally breaks into the farmland, and Roy takes out a strange book and whispers something as he looks at it. Yakito thinks that Roy is casting magic, which makes him very excited, and he thinks this is the plot that should appear in another world. However, the next moment, Roy flees with Yakito. When they are safe, Yakito learns that the book Roy just took is actually shelter guidelines and emergency measures for meeting beasts. Now Yakito can finally accept the fact that this world is completely different from the otherworldly world in his mind. But compared to the life of being tortured by his father, the life of working with the villagers every day is much better. Just then, he says that he should thank God for allowing him to come to this world. Hearing this, Alara curiously asks him what the god is. After some asking, Yakito learns that there are no concepts such as gods or religions in this world. When a person dies, he dies, and no one believes in reincarnation. Just when he is thinking, he goes out one 
wandering and finds a dead rabbit. At this time, Yukido thinks of a question. Since there is no concept of gods in this world, humans won't be buried in the cemetery after death. But how will they deal with the dead people? Before Yukido can figure it out, Roy arrives with Alara. It turns out that Roy has heard that the bookstore in the Imperial City has purchased some books for adults only which include very exciting content. To satisfy his curiosity, Roy comes to the Imperial City the next day with Yukido and Alara. He warns Yukido not to talk with the city people because they despise village people. Soon after, they arrive at the bookstore, and all three of them are a little excited. But when Yukido opens the book, his excitement vanishes. The adult-only content in the book can only be considered art in his original world, and even some art museums will display such manga. Roy and Alara are very surprised, lamenting that the place where Yukido lived before was so open. After that, they buy a few books and intend to return to the village. Just then, Yukido finds that many people have gathered nearby. When he checks closer, he finds that a group of people has drunk poison under the order of the soldiers. And the next second, this group of people all dies. Yukido is a bit frightened, and he doesn't know what they are doing. Just then, Alara shows up and takes Yukido away. With Alara's explanation, Yukido learns that there is a system called end of life in this country, and the citizens have to die according to the emperor's order. Yukido immediately realizes that everyone in this country will go through such a terrifying thing, but Roy tells him that they are special and different. Without thinking more, Yukido returns to the village with them. What they don't notice is that the people behind them are discussing, saying that why the emperor still doesn't deal with this group of people from the isolation camp because they are obviously a group of filthy defects. At night, while Yukito is sleeping, Alara sneaks into his bed. It turned out that Alara, after reading the forbidden books for adults, wants to try a way to give men more energy. After some time, Alara finally calms down. At this time, Yukito remembers his experience in the Imperial City, and he asks Alara why the people in the city do not like the people of the village. Alara tells Yukito that the village is called an isolation camp by the city's people. After saying this, she shows the brand on her back. The villagers are a group of people who are afraid of the end of life system or don't align with the country's ways. Therefore, they are ostracized by the residents of the Imperial City. Yukito is the only one outside the village who does not despise them and allows Alara to touch various parts of his body. He says he was once despised, and that now it is his first time having friends. Touched, Alara looks at Yukito and finds the necklace on Yakito's neck. Yakito remembers that the necklace is an amulet given by his father, and is said to represent the god Matama. Seeing Alara like the necklace so much, he gives it to her, which makes her very happy. Yakito thinks he will live a peaceful life in the village, but an accident occurs the next day. When he wakes up, he finds Roy wounded in front of the restaurant, and Roy tells him the truth under his questioning. It turns out that this village is used to keep those who are designated by the country as deviants, just like a dump, and the villagers will be forced to go through the end-of-life system at any time. Today is the day when some villagers are taken to go through the system, including Alara and her sister. Just then, Clan shows up on a carriage, and they head to the Imperial City together, hoping to rescue Alara and her sister. When they arrive, Alara's sister and some villagers have already been hanged, much to Yakito's anger. He questions the soldiers. Why are these villagers called deviants because they are afraid of death? Why do they have to experience the end of life? Before the soldier can answer, Yakito hears the mockery of the surrounding residents of Imperial City, and their thoughts are completely different from that of normal people. They think accepting the end of life is obviously their duty. At this moment, the soldier captain kills Yakito with his katana, and the next moment, Alara is also killed. Yakito slowly crawls towards Alara, and he remembers that his father once said that no matter what happens to him, the god Matama will save him. But he thinks who should be saved by the god is the group of people who are kind and enthusiastic about life in front of him. He prays in his heart that a god will appear to save them, and then he holds the amulet he gave to Alara and recites the incantation in the cult that can summon the god. The next moment, the amulet flies into the air, with the lightning and thunder. A cute little girl appears in the air. As soon as she appears, she rushes to Yukido excitedly, shouting Yukido, you finally summon me. Only then does the little girl discover that Yukido is dead. She becomes extremely furious, and later, countless terrifying black vines come out from her feet, pulling and swallowing all the soldiers into the god's body. The next moment, the little girl becomes cute again, bringing Yukido and Alara back to life with her divine power. After that, the girl rides on Yukido, touching his head gently. Yukido is really curious about who this little girl is, and the girl tells him that she is his god, Mitama. At this moment, the other executed villagers have also come to life, and Matama is very proud, saying that she only wanted to save Yukido, but her power is so strong and she didn't control it well. Yukido is a little surprised that Matama has the ability to bring the dead back to life. 
when Yakito returns to the village with the others. The villagers feel unbelievable. It is their first time seeing those who have undergone the end of life come back alive. To celebrate their safe return, they go to the restaurant to drink again. Later, Matama is taken away by Alara to get dressed because it is so strange not to wear clothes in this world. Previously, Alara saw Matama lying on Yakito's body and feels very jealous, so she asks about the relationship between Matama and Yakito. Matama says that she is the god of Yakito. Seeing that Alara doesn't know what a god is, Matama explains that it means they will be together forever from birth to death. Her words make Alara misunderstand that she and Yakito have been married and that Yakito likes such a lowly, while she has an ample body so Yakito Yakito doesn't like her, which makes Alara very frustrated. Now that he and the villagers have offended the royal family, Yakito is thinking about how to face their retaliation, and he learns from clan that the end of life system is a rule established by the emperor hundreds of years ago, and it is impossible to break this rule. At this time, Matama has changed her clothes and lies on Yakito's body again, and Roy, seeing the cute girl Matama, is deeply obsessed with Matama. Unexpectedly, he directly proposes to her, only to be rejected by her feeling disgusted. After being rejected, Roy awakens his hidden hobby to be a masochist making the people around him despise him. Seeing Matama get dressed, Yakito asks her about her power, and Matama says she is a god that can do anything. Hearing this, Yakito thinks Matama is the supreme power he gained in another world, and she can help her change his fate. Matama is also very confident and starts to show her ability, only to find that she is so weak now that she can only knock down a wine glass. Matama immediately checks the number of her followers and finds that it is zero. She later explains that the more followers the gods have, the more powerful they become. And in this world, she doesn't have any followers, so she has almost no powers left. Since they are in another world, how can there be a follower in Matama? And knowing this, Yakito is very disappointed. Just then, Matama notices something wrong. That is, why Yakito isn't a follower in her. What she doesn't know is that Yakito hates religion so much that it is impossible for him to believe in a god. He ignored Matama as acting like a spoiled child and goes to the bathhouse alone. If he can't figure out a solution as soon as possible, the villagers are likely to be executed by the royal family. While Yakito is thinking, Matama comes out of the water, and after learning of Yakito's troubles, Matama reminds him that if he wants to live, he can run away. Yakito, however, tells Matama that he lived a miserable life previously and had been controlled by his father. In this new life, he doesn't want to be like that anymore, and he wants to save this group of friends he has finally met. As if he has made up his mind, he tells Matama that since Matama could use divine power as long as she has more followers, he decides to turn Matama into a god and create a new religion for her in this world. Meanwhile, after awakening a perverted proclivity because of the appearance of Matama, Roy often fantasizes that Matama is his master and rides on him, hurting and controlling him like a queen. So, when Yakito tells Roy about his idea of creating a religion and making Matama a god, Roy happily accepts the invitation to join the religious organization and becomes Matama's first follower. Thus, the religious organization that worships Matama is officially established, and Yakito, the first administrator of the cult, knows that the fastest way for a religion to attract followers is to let the god perform miracles. So he comes up with a plan, and under his arrangement, the first performance begins. Yakito gathers a large number of villagers and declares that Matama is a god that can do anything. Seeing that people don't know what a god is, Yakito says that he will show them one of Matama's miracles. He looks at Alara in the crowd, saying that Alara should now have trouble in the personal relationships. Alara immediately gets blushed, saying, how could you know that? But what she thinks in her heart is, does he already know that she likes him? Yakito doesn't know what Alara is thinking, but he confidently says that it is Matama's divine power that sees through her inner thoughts and tells him. In fact, Yakito takes advantage of the very famous Barnum effect in psychology, like a soothsayer who always says something applicable to everyone, so that people will put themselves in the situation that the soothsayer mentioned and think it is right. Just as Yakito is about to continue his performance, Matama starts to sabotage it. She says that she is a god who knows everything, and then she loudly declares that Alara's trouble is that she has an ample body. After saying this, she reminds Alara that Yakito likes smaller ones. Alara breaks down immediately, directly leaning her chest against a stake, and then she asks for an axe from the villagers. It seems that she wants to deal with her busted body. Yakito hurriedly says that he likes the bigger ones, but he said that the god Matama knows everything just now, and Matama clearly said that Yakito likes the smaller ones, so Alara firmly believes that Yakito likes smaller ones indeed. Yakito doesn't know how to explain it, and the miracle performance fails in the end. 
After that, Yukito thinks of many ways and performs many times, but each time it ends in failure. After working for several days, Matama still has only one follower, Roy. Only then does Yukito realize that establishing a religious organization is so difficult, and it is really not easy for his father to achieve this. Just then, Aura appears in a panic holding her pet Chilchil, which accidentally eats the poison used to eliminate the beasts. Yukido subconsciously wants to call a doctor, but Aura's sister tells him that the royal family will not save life outside of humans, and there is nothing they can do about it without medical knowledge in the village. In order to save Chilchil, Yukido asks Matama to help find herbs that may detoxify. However, they come back too late, and Chilchil can't be saved since its condition has worsened a lot. Just when everyone thinks that Chilchil is about to die, Matama saves it with all her divine power. But unfortunately, the divine power from the perverted follower Roy's belief is still too weak, and Matama looks much older than before. At this time, Matama discovers that the number of her followers has become three, and it turns out that the Aura sisters see that Matama has resurrected Chilchil and become her followers. Matama also finds that she has much more divine power now, and Yukido thinks it may be related to the way that someone joins the religious organization. The Alara sisters worship Matama after they saw her perform the miracle, so they firmly believe in the god Matama, and therefore, the divine power from their belief must be stronger. But Roy only worships her because he has a strong infatuation with Matama. After discovering that Matama has strong divine power, Alara asks her to revive the soldiers she killed before. She believes that those soldiers who are responsible for carrying out the end of life are only following the orders from their superiors and they should not easily take their lives. Yukito is a little worried, but he doesn't stop it. Soon, Matamai uses her divine power to resurrect those soldiers, but the captain of the soldiers unexpectedly turns into a woman with an ample body. Her name is Bertrand, and she was originally a knight belonging to the Imperial City. She wants to return to the palace after her resurrection. However, because of the change of gender, the soldiers guarding the gate do not recognize her at all. Hearing that she just came out of the isolation camp, they drive her away in disgust. Bertrand, who has nowhere to go, spends the night alone in the forest, wondering where she should go if she is really abandoned by the Imperial City. Just then, she meets Roy, who says that Bertrand has a really good figure and approaches her obscenely, seemingly trying to harass Bertrand. This frightens Bertrand, and she wants to attack Roy, but without the Emperor's order, she cannot draw her sword and attack ordinary people. Just when Bertrand is desperate, Yakito shows up and beats Roy away. Yakito praises Bertrand as a loyal subordinate, and then taunts that even so, the Imperial City has still abandoned her. Bertrand doesn't want to admit it, but she knows that Yakito was telling the truth. Just as Bertrand is frustrated, Yakito offers help. He asks Bertrand to join his team, and he promises to give Bertrand a place to stay. Yakito's sincere words and handsome face make Bertrand's heart race. With her face turning red, she agrees to Yakito's invitation. Soon after, the village's farmland is attacked by monsters, and Yakito appears with Matama. Matama confidently summons a sword hidden at the bottom of the sea, asking the villagers to attack the monsters with this sword. However, the villagers are defeated by monsters in an instant, and Yakito can't help but complain that Matama is as unreliable as ever. At this moment, Bertrand appears handsomely, faced with the attack of the monster. She draws her sword and attacks directly, bursting out with great power in an instant and cutting the giant monster in front of her in half. The villagers around all cheer, and they adore the powerful knight in front of them. Seeing this, both Yakito and Matama are stunned. Later, Yakito thinks of something and immediately introduces to the villagers that Bertrand is a holy knight of their religious organization, and as long as they are willing to join them, he promises to let Bertrand protect their farmlands from monsters. Although the villagers don't know what the religion is, they still decide to join the organization when hearing that they can be protected as soon as they join Yakito. Meanwhile, the Alara sisters is also trying to attract more people to their organization in their restaurant. They announce to customers that from now on, wine in restaurants will only be served to members of the religious organization, and if they want to drink, they must join the organization. In addition, Yakido also uses the knowledge on Earth to design a jar that can preserve food for a long time, similar to the refrigerator on Earth, and everyone who joins the organization can get one for free, due to the increasing number of the new members. Roy, who is in charge of making the jar, has not slept for three days and is very tired. However, as soon as he hears Matama's orders, he becomes spirited again, and he feels very excited when being abused by Matama-sama. Besides, Yakido also makes snacks unique to the earth, the biscuits, and everyone who joins the organization can taste them. He also asks Matama to use her divine power to massage the organization members, which the villagers enjoy very much. 
Soon, the number of Matama's followers has grown to 107. Bertrand's joining and offering benefits to villagers are part of Yakito's plan. In Yakito's opinion, instead of explaining the existence of God to villagers who do not understand God at all, it is better to directly give benefits to those who join the organization. Unlike the previous world in which people join religious organization by faith, he wants to build a religion driven by benefits. As the number of people joining the organization increases, Yakito thinks of a question. How many followers does Matama need to gain the power to fight the Imperial City? He finds Bertrand to inquire about the Imperial City. When he sees Bertrand, he is a little stunned. Bertrand is wearing a sexy maid outfit, which is completely different from the handsome look she showed before. It turns out that all of this is done by the Alara sisters, who are attracted by Bertrand's beautiful face and sexy body. And in order to satisfy their special proclivity, they force Bertrand to wear a maid outfit, but Yakido has a more important thing to do. He asks Bertrand how many soldiers the Imperial City have. Bertrand thinks Yakido wants to rebel, but Yakido tells her that he only wants to protect this village. Bertrand tells Yakido that the strength of the Imperial City does not lie in the number of soldiers they have. The real reason why the Imperial City can take control for long is that they have a team of Archons, which is an elite unit under the direct control of the Emperor. Legend has it that every member of this team is given special powers by the Emperor, and each of them has the power to destroy a mountain. Knights like Bertrand are no match for them at all. After chatting with Bertrand, Yakido immediately finds Matama and asks her whether she has the power to destroy a mountain. Matama tells him that as long as there are 10,000 followers, she can do that. Hearing this, Yakido is a bit desperate. He worked hard for so long but only gained more than 100 followers, and he wonders when he will attract 10,000 followers. Yakito finds Bertrand again, and Bertrand is now dressed in strange outfit again by the Alara sisters. Yakito approaches Bertrand step by step, which makes her very shy. Just when Bertrand thinks that Yakito wants to humiliate her, Yakito pulls out her sword, saying, This is just an ordinary sword. It turns out that Yakito saw Bertrand easily defeat the monster with this sword, so he wants to know if there is anything special about this weapon and whether it can be purchased in bulk, so that he can equip the religious organization with these weapons to fight against the Imperial City. Bertrand tells Yakido that the sword is not as simple as it seems, and that if the user masters the skill of using it, he can cut off everything in this world, but only those who have a certain position in the army of the Imperial City will be given this weapon with special abilities by the Emperor. That is to say, it is impossible to buy this weapon in bulk. Unwilling to admit failure, Yakido then finds Clan and Alara's sister Sayurul to inquire about the village. It turns out that there are countless isolation camps in this world, and these isolation camps surround the Imperial City, like a human wall guarding the residents of the Imperial City. The total number of villagers in their village is only about 2,000, and even if all of them become Matama's followers, it is still not enough. Unfortunately, even knowing that there are other villages, Yakido cannot think of a way to increase the number of followers to 10,000 in a short period of time. At night, Yakito is frustrated in the restaurant, and Sayurul comes to comfort him. She tells Yakito that if it weren't for him, they would have been killed by the soldiers, and he has already done a lot for them, so he doesn't need to think too much. Sayurul's so words remind Yakido of his father, who said the same thing when he taught Yakido about the religion. The initial members of his father's cult were basically strong men like martial artists, so they used violence to defeat another cult in a certain town and snatch all the members of their cult. With other means, the number of the cult's member was increased from more than 100 to tens of thousands. His father told Yakito not to think too much, and there were many ways to develop the cult, including occupying their territory. Instantly, Yakido seems to think of a solution. The next day, Clan approaches Yakido and asks if he has thought of a way to fight the Imperial City. Yakido asks him does it matter if he breaks the culture of this world when he uses his way. Roy tells Yakido that the village is characterized by freedom, and if Yakido feels that something must be done, then feel free to do it. After receiving an affirmative answer, Yakido says, let's try it and see me get this village advanced by 500 years. Soon, a month passes by. During this time, Bertrand patrols the vicinity of the village in strange outfits designed by the Alara sisters every day, in case the Imperial City sends people to attack the village. One day, when patrolling, Bertrand meets a white-haired girl named Adder, the Archon of the Imperial City in the legend. A long time ago, she has been ordered to punish the village that rebel against the end-of-life system, but every time she tries to come to the village, she will be assigned other tasks by an Archon named Loki, who seems deliberately to stall for time. Now Adder finally finished other tasks. Adder easily discovers Bertrand's identity using a special ability, and she takes Bertrand, who appears in the village, as a rebel, and the two break out a fight. Adder easily defeats Bertrand with her great power, but she doesn't kill her because she decides to find out why Bertrand's gender has been changed. 
when Adder is about to enter the village. She is frightened by the windmills, watering hoses, and the tractors in the village, and she thinks that all of these moving things are the monsters she has never seen. Now, let's go back to one month ago. At that time, Yukio told Klen and Siyuro that he would increase the number of Matama's followers to 10,000 before the Archon arrives. People in this world don't know what gods are, plus people may not believe that Matama is a god due to her appearance. So he increased the number of the followers by bringing people benefits before. Next, he would broaden the scope, intending to use Matama's abilities to take the village forward in time. Seeing Yukido trust her, Matama was moved to tears, but what she didn't know is that a disaster is waiting for her. Soon after, Roy is driving a harvester in the field, quickly harvesting wheat. It is his first time using such an amazing tool, and he is very excited. Except for Roy, the villagers are also very excited, and it is their first time seeing a machine from Earth. Such a way of harvesting wheat is dozens of times faster than theirs. Yukido tells the villagers that this tool is a divine instrument created by Matama-sama, and that as long as they join their religious organization and believe in Matama, Matama-sama will grant the followers this instrument. Hearing this, the people on the spot express their desire to believe in Matama and join the organization. Yukido tells Matama, who is already exhausted, to give a planting machine and harvester as well as the fuel needed to each of the villagers who joined. Matama complains that her life will be harvested if she continues like this. Fortunately, Matama is quickly restored, and she gains more divine power because of the villagers joining. The number of her followers has been increased to 927 now, and it is much faster than the method Yakido used before. Just as Yakido is thinking about what to do next, he sees Aura fetch water from a distant well and get wet after she knocked over the bucket, which makes him inspired. In the next scene, a faucet is installed in Alara's home, and she no longer needs to go to the far well to fetch water. At this time, Silural appears and brings swimming suits to the two in front of her. It turns out that Yakido built a modern swimming pool for the village, where the villagers can fully enjoy the summer. Everyone is very happy, and the only one who suffers is Matama. It turns out that under the orders of Yakido, she pumped out all the groundwater and installed a running water system for the homes of the followers. Such a heavy workload makes her run out of her divine power again, and she is totally exhausted. Fortunately, their effort is not in vain, and the number of followers has been increased to 1,659, causing Matama to gain more divine power and restore her physical strength. Before Matama can be happy, Yakido whispers, Next, I want to make everyone feel exclusivity. At night, the tavern, which originally rarely heats up in the middle of the night, is particularly hopping today because Yakido has installed lights in the tavern, with which they can get light now and party in the tavern until late at night. Besides, each follower can get the chance of installing lights in their houses, and everyone can enjoy the convenience brought by the lights. Silural also designs a bunny girl costume for herself and her sister Alara, with the intention to celebrate their victory over the night and to embody the exclusivity that Yakito talked about. Alara was shy at first, but thinking that it is Yakito's idea, she gradually becomes bold. It is definitely the happiest night that the villagers had ever. Meanwhile, on the mountain, Yakito looks at the illuminated village and sighs that electricity is one of the greatest inventions in human history, thanks to which human beings can overcome the night. Everyone is enjoying the night, except for Matama. She is very weak at the moment because she has exhausted her divine power again. Klen is also shocked by the scenery in the village, and he can't help but lament that even the emperor has never seen such impressive views, which are far more impressive than that in the imperial city. Klen's words make Bertrand alerted. How could a villager from the isolation camp know about the Imperial City and the Emperor's thoughts? Klen tells the two in front of him that he was actually working for the Imperial Palace before. While saying this, he takes off his clothes, revealing a mark, which represents that he is not a villager from the isolation camp. After that, he explains that he is just living in the isolation camp according to his own ideas, and he prefers life in the isolation camp to that in the Imperial City. Klen knows that he is acting like a weirdo, but Yakito and Matama, as well as the gods they often talk about, are even stranger than him. He asks Yakito to explain what a god is. After thinking for a while, Yakito answers that the gods will be mentioned in two situations. One is that people will fabricate a god to forcibly explain some unexplained events. The other is that some religions will create a god to attract some followers to benefit them. Speaking of this, Yakito becomes curious. He can understand why they don't have the second kind of gods he mentioned, but it is very strange that they don't have the first. That is to say, there are no unexplained events in this country. Bertrand says that according to Yakito's words, the god in this country should be the emperor, because all the natural phenomena that occur in this world will be explained by the assembly that works directly under the emperor. As long as the assembly still exists, they won't have any unexplained events. Hearing what Bertrand said, Yakito falls into deep thought. 
because of the electricity. In just one night, the number of Matama's followers has increased to 2008, which is also the number of all villagers. Just when Yakido is about to head to other villages to attract more followers, Roy anxiously informs everyone that Bertrand is captured by a girl. Next, let's go back to the story after Adder defeats Bertrand. Adder thinks that this strange village is likely to pose a threat to the Imperial City. Holding a water pipe, she forces Bertrand to tell what is going on in the village. If Bertrand doesn't tell the truth, she'll break her limbs first. Just as Adder is about to harm Bertrand, Matama appears, stating that she is a god, and Bertrand is her follower. Like her family, it is her job to protect her followers. When Adder hears the word family, she is very angry, as if she hates the word very much. After Yakido arrives, Bertrand tells him that the girl in front of him is the legendary Archon, and she comes this time to wipe out the village. Adder shoots a beam of energy at the people in front of her, thinking such an attack will be enough to destroy them. However, when the smoke disappears, she finds that her attack is blocked by the giant rock in front of her. Before she can figure out what happened, Matama unleashes her divine power and summons many human-like monsters, which then rush towards Adder. Adder struggles to fend off Matama's attacks, and she can't figure out how there can be such a powerful force other than the Archons. Obviously, Adder gradually can't resist with more and more human-like monsters appearing, and at this time, Matama summons a huge barrier to trap Adder inside. Matama happily throws herself into Yakito's arms, but not long after she is filled with joy. A beam of energy breaks through the barrier. It turns out that Adder did not use her full strength just now, and at this moment, her clothes have been damaged, with various strange arms floating around her body. Seeing this, Matama summons giant pythons to attack Adder, and the arms around Adder burst out with a dazzling light, easily absorbing these giant pythons. Yakito is frightened by this, and Adder's power is almost like something from a legend. Now he can only hope that Matama can defeat Adder. And Matama, who senses Yakito's emotions, decides to strike the strongest blow. As Matama recites strange spells, many arms with weapons appear behind her, which are weapons that bring together the powers of millions of different gods, and she wants to use the power of other gods to fight Adder. The power of the two collides fiercely, but in less than three seconds, the arms summoned by Matama disappear. They think Matama is not worthy of using this power after they see that she has only more than 2,000 followers, so they leave. In this way, Matama is defeated and falls to the ground, while Adder, who is in the air, is also seriously injured. Yakito hurries forward to hug the injured Matama, and just then, Yakito's companions appear. They come here to care for them despite the dangers of the battlefield. Seeing this, Adder is furious, and she seems to hate seeing people caring for each other. So she decides to completely destroy everything in front of her. As terrifying power gathers in Adder's hand, a huge energy ball appears, and then she throws it at the distant village. As the energy ball explodes, the village will be completely destroyed. Just when Yakito is desperate, things turn around with an unknown person snapping his finger. A strange light flashes, and Adder finds that the village is still intact. It turns out everything that happened just now is an illusion, and the explosion is not in the village. Just then, Clan shows up and snaps his finger. With a flash of light, he turns into a girl. It is soon revealed that Clan is the Archon Loki who has been stopping Adder from coming to the village, and she has been hiding her identity to live in the village. Just when everyone is confused about what happened, Loki suddenly moves to Yakito's side and asks him whether he wants wants the Emperor to be killed. As for Yakito's answer, let's get it revealed in the next part. As the plots pass off, Yakito has had many members in his harem, such as the adorable Alara, the cute Matama, the perverted Bertrand, and even the mysterious Loki. If Yakito wants to survive in this world, it is far more difficult than he thinks. With more and more teammates joining, it will be easier for him to establish the religion and recruit followers so that he can fight against the mysterious Emperor. After watching the video, what's your favorite character? Comment below to tell me. If you also like this anime, please like and subscribe. See you next time.